Hi everybody and welcome. Today we are here gathered in the New Year's Eve or day or whatever you are living in the world. And I look forward to the conversation we are going to have today through Stephanie Patel. And uh, a lot is going on and everybody is talking about the what is happening and what is not happening. So it will be an interesting evening. So welcome everybody. If you're listening now or listening later on. So Stephanie. I reiterate what you said. Welcome everybody. And I hope you get something out of this as we do. We always get something out of this, don't we, Sissa? Oh, always, always. Our lives are kind of reflections of what what goes on here because it's all a synergy. It's yes. part of our life. It is it, doing these sessions is, well, of course, I do them all the time. But for Cecil and I to get together and do this is, it, it it's a fundamental aspect of our life, right? Yes, it is. It is um, every, every time. I hear from the circle or uh, God or anybody, it is like something new opens up. And it's like the, the jigsaw puzzle that Robert was talking about in uh, Christmas Day, that we have to destroy it and see what builds up again. And every time a new aspect is showing itself because we are allowed the old picture to crumble. So this I find very, very exciting. I saw a post today that said uh, the date today is 12 31 23 mm. and it won't be the same date again for a hundred years. And I said, well, that's, that's only because you ignore, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really 12 31 2023. And you're ignoring the part that it's going to be 12, 31, 21, 23. You can't ever be in the same place twice. <laughs> no. You just can't. You can't hold the same exact, the same exact moment will never happen twice. And so it, and so I was thinking about it and I thought, wow, it's, it, you may think it is because you're ignoring certain changes. And that's the way we do in life. You know, people do, or I do, or we do, is that you think it's always the same. Mm -hmm. The same as yesterday, same day, same day, only because you're ignoring what has changed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be a very subtle change. Yes. Right? <laughs> and this is what is actually very fascinating to to start to see the changes and then you you kind of can go into new aspects that you haven't thought of before so when you allow everything to kind of be new but we are so caught up in habits and and thinking patterns so it's so easy to just keep on thinking the same every day every day I was telling Cecil today that somebody had said something to me or something happened that was very simple and somebody got angry about it. That something that I had not paid attention to them or something, I let other people in intervene. I turned my attention to other people or something. And I got angry about it. I got angry that somebody would be, that this person would be angry about it. I was like, why are you angry about that? I didn't really have much control over, you know, the story had changed a bit. And anyway, we got into a little bit of a discussion about it. And I started thinking, I actually used the Byron Katie method. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. I think Byron Katie, personally, for me, Byron Katie may be the most enlightened person I know on the planet. I know of, I don't know her, I know of. And anyway, so I turned it around and I was like, Okay, I'm the one that's angry. Why am I angry? 
I'm a I was so angry. I was like, I just don't want to have anything to do with that person anymore. They're always getting angry. They're always throwing temper tantrums over something. Why don't they just roll with the punches? <laughs> and then I realized I was the angry one. I was so angry. I didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And why was it affecting me that way? Hmm. And so I started to think about it. And I realized that I felt like I had done something wrong that I didn't even realize. You know, it was like, well, you could have told those people to go away. And I was like, I, I didn't even realize I had that option or that I would want to. Hmm. And so I felt like I had done something wrong. I was guilty of some offense by not because we were in the middle of something when we got interrupted and that I had created some offense by not telling these people to go away and continuing with my uh, uh, encounter with this other person. And so I felt guilty. Then I got angry because I was somehow I had done something wrong. Right. And I didn't even know I had done it wrong. And I really had to pull myself back from that and figure out I was the angry one. And this happens to us every, it, I can't speak for other people, but it happens to me every day that I react to something. And it's like, just because somebody else is angry, why, why do I have to be angry? I never did anything wrong. And, it, and then you have to tell you, go back to, you know, you never did anything wrong. Just love yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that I think the feeling of guilt when it arises, it uh, makes a response, and uh, anger can be one of them. So, if you, as you do, you you pull yourself back and you start to look at what was actually going on, then you can see something new. Let's take you like an avalanche. Yes. Those things that I started thinking about, I thought. Wow. I look back at my life when I was young, a child, and, and a lot of people were doing things. And I was, you might say I was being emotionally and in, in some cases, uh, as I got older, sexually abused. And I thought there must be something wrong with me, mm -hmm. that I was attracting this. And of course, our vibrations do cause us to attract it. So if, if we think somebody's being, we're victims and somebody's victimizing us, then it's our vibration that's pulling it in because we have something we have to figure out. And yes. when I was young, I thought, I didn't think these people were bad people. I just thought they were confused, but I didn't mm -hmm. understand it, why, why this was going on. So I thought, well, maybe there's something wrong with me. You yeah. know, I'm the one that's flawed. And so, you know, I didn't have a I didn't notice a lot of anger but maybe I, you store that anger right mm. we were talking uh mm. Cicel and I and and the circle because we have our conversations on the side as well uh we're talking about how we store our all the shit you know and the shit is when you think you did something wrong you can't do anything wrong as Abraham Hicks would say you can't and I can't, not and you can't get it wrong, but we think we are wrong. We think there's something wrong with us. And that all goes back to, you know, our first mistake, I suppose, when we thought we'd done something wrong. And so we think we've done something wrong and we beat up on ourselves. And then yes. we get sick. Yes. Our body can't take it because we're, where are we storing it? We're storing it in the vibrations, in our vibrational matrix, which is essentially our body. In our world. Yes. We may attract other people who come along and do the same thing until we get it and can release that anger. Yeah, I think it's so, so important what you're saying. And uh, I do believe the body is the instrument that kind of store whatever is not released. So when we dare to stop and, and have a new look at what is going on, the picture changes. And we can release some of the things that has uh, drawn in the tension in the muscles and the organs or whatever it, it is stored. I had a lot of pain and been healing for many, many years, little by little. So now it's uh, not so much left, thank God. <laughs> I'm 
pain did you have? I had sciatic uh, pain. Uh, I had from I was 14 years. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was 25. I have had five prolapse. The last one when I was in the beginning of 40. I have had kidney stones. Um, yeah, muscle pains. Been uh, a regular at the, the chiropractic and uh, physiotherapist. So interesting. So, how are you now physically? Very good. The last seven years, eight years, I started to really heal the pain and the the belief systems that was holding on to the pain. The feelings that I couldn't express when I was a child could come out. So little by little, the pain has released. I'm so, so happy for that. Yeah. And I had a discussion yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. It was about releasing. You know, after we had that discussion, God came through and explained about releasing the shit. Excuse my language, people, but this is the way they talk. And it's because they want you to realize, I think, that there are no words that are wrong. Forbidden. You know, because then you just build up that guilt thing. Anyway, about releasing the shit. And you have to release the shit. You can't hold on to it. Because if you do, it starts to cause deterioration in your own physical well-being. Um. Anyway, we were having a discussion about that, and I was thinking, well, if when you start releasing the shit, gradually your physical condition starts to get better, people even can are cured spontaneously of cancer or whatever, you know. It's not necessarily what your doctor tells you, but if you trust on what your doctor tells you, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor and getting that input and putting that in the mix of what you need to do to heal yourself, you know, it's like God. You ask God to save you and he sends you a boat <laughs> and you say, no, I'm waiting for him to pluck me out of the water. Um, you know, you use what you get. Um, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't use medical care. I'm saying that for some of us, there's an incentive to see illness as a, um, as something, I almost say it unnatural. That doesn't have to be. Um, because it is that stored dark energy. And I've always been the one that said, hey, when my time comes, I want to be like Wind Walker. I love that movie. He didn't really do this, but my idea was he pulls up the flap, he looks out, and he says, it's a good day to die. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you choose your your moment of, of, of passing, and it's not necessarily because you're holding on to the bedpost. Don't take me, don't take me. Anyway, that, I always thought I would like that to be my situation. Why do we have to be sick? No. Yeah. Anyway, we were talking about it. And um, I was saying, you know, if, if you can heal from all these things, and you, Steve, could have healed from your cancer if you had understood what was, what was uh, causing it. Um, when people die from something like you died from your cancer, then you still have that dark energy. Mm -hmm. That dark energy that causes you, the human body, to be um, infirm. Mm -hmm. The infirmity. Uh, if you don't heal it and you die, then that dark energy has not left. Therefore, you're still holding on to that dark energy. And we know that it's a little bit harder in heaven to release it because you don't have the challenges that you do on earth that allow you to face your demons, so to speak, face your shadows, because you're always in the light. And so when you come back to earth, you bring back all that dark energy. Unless you can release it. And so by... By working with the circle, they are benefiting too. It's not just us. It's a two-way street. It has to be a give and take. It has to be, or it wouldn't work. 
And they are benefiting too because they are also able to release their dark energy. So when they come back, they're not bringing it back with them. And I have seen that with Steve. I mean, I have totally seen in the, you know, more than eight years since we've been connected after his death, I have seen the change in him. I really have. And it's been up and down because at first it was different. And then it really took a nosedive for a while. And as he was just having temper tantrum after temper tantrum. And I came to see that, you know, he's really changing. He's a different person than he was when I first connected with him. I find this so relieving that it is actually possible to um, get rid of the dark en energy that we see so clearly when we are in the light because that is, it will be very visible. And through working in this way, we are able to actually release it. And oh, it is a relief. <laughs> and so people know, you know, Cecil and I and a couple of others, in between these sessions, our lives are still about implementing. I mean, this is like a continuation. These conversations are a continuation of what's going on in our lives as we are implementing, continuing to talk with God and others in the circle um, about our ongoing issues, because each of us has them. And as they come up, we are working with them. And this is something everyone out there can do. Sissel is beginning to um, be able to communicate with someone in the circle. And so that is very powerful, right, Sissel? Oh, it is. It's so, so nice. It, uh, yeah, I am enjoying it a lot. <laughs> and so as more people, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that everybody's going to resonate with this because as God says, some people just aren't ready. But for those who are ready, who are just craving, they crave inside them to figure it out, to solve the issue so they don't have to keep going around and round and round on the karmic wheel. For those people who are so committed to saying, if not me, then who? Because that's what we had to say, right? If not me, then who? Yeah. Who's going to save us other than ourselves? Mm. And uh, and so for those people out there who are ready, um, you know, it's 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 feasible. Mm. It's feasible to raise your vibration. I'm not going to say it's feasible for all your challenges to be over. Because that would be really boring. But it's feasible for you to reach a point where you can ride on that board and not get knocked off by the waves when you're surfing you can surf the ocean the ups and downs and not get knocked off yeah. and who knows where you can go you know when they i always think of the four minute mile you know people couldn't break the four minute mile the runners until they did and now it's been broken again and again and again who knows where the next level is exactly the and this is what i find so fascinating when i break the picture as we talked about in the beginning uh when i allow new things to show up life gets so exciting because you know that the limiting beliefs that i have been brought up with is keeping me in a cage as long as I have to hold on to them. But that is my choice. No one can take it from me as long as I want to be there. So, yeah. yeah it's your choice. It's always your choice, people. Yes. No one can take it from you. No one can give it to you. It's your choice. If you don't receive, no one can give you something that you don't receive. And if people are handing you their shit and you're receiving it, that's your choice. Yes. Yes, exactly. All right. Ready to see what anybody has to say, heaven side? Yes, very much. Yeah. Here we go. See? 
make no mistake, there will never be a time when you will be the result of your own mendacity. In other words, there is never a time when you will cease to be God energy. That will never happen. And it doesn't matter how much you believe that you are a body and that God is dead. It doesn't matter. It will not change the reality. The reality is that God is in you and you are in God. The reality is that God is everything and you are the recipient of all the gifts that God gives to you. God does not give you shit to hold. God says, if shit comes to you, let it go. Let it go. Because it's only the energetic vibration that needs to pass through you. It needs to pass through you in order for the whole to continue to remain in a state of health. And therefore, if you are suffering from some illness in your physical form, this is a message to you that you're holding on to the shit and you're not letting it go. Where does the shit go when you let it go? Well, where do you think it goes? It goes into the ground and it fertilizes the world that is arising from within ground level. You are at ground level, people. And I am here above you. And I see you. I see you and I can guide you because I have the ability to see the whole layout, you see. I am God and I am in each one of you. I am in Steph. I am in Sissel. I am in everybody that hears this. And if you choose not to accept me, then you'll have to hold on to the shit. Because that is the shit. The shit is that you refuse to accept me. You refuse to accept reality. You refuse to let me flow through you. I am the good energy that comes to you when you eat the good food that I give to you. And I am the shit that is left over and that goes to nourish the next level of life that will arise. And once again, it will feed you because it is a very, very, very incredibly awesome system <laughs> that I devised in order to keep you alive forever and ever with me. Because we are a synergy, you see. I love you. And if you love me, then what's the problem? And what's the problem? The problem for some is that they do not love me. And therefore, they say, what the f*** are you doing here? Get away from me. Get away from me. Because they say, hey, God, why did you make me this way? Why did you make me dependent on you? Why didn't you make me so that I could be completely separate from you? Why didn't you make me this way that I have to do what you tell me to or else I'll have to eat all the shit that others hand to me? And I say, because you are my beloved child, do you talk to your parents and say, why did you make me this way? Why did you make me into a baby that has to eat and poop? Why? I am your father and I am the inspiration of the nation. The nation is the condition of trust on their being a rebirth over and over and over again. Every day there is a rebirth. There is a rebirth of the energy of the earth. And if you're too stupid to understand this, then you can be like Stephanie, who said, 
I must be the stupidest person on the face of the earth. And I said to her, no, honey, you're not the stupidest person on the face of the earth. You may be the simplest. And the simplest one is the one who says, I'm here, God, and I have nowhere to go but in you. And you have nowhere to go but in me. We're locked into a synergy. Cannot be undone. Cannot be undone. I can never leave you and you can never leave me. And if I try to leave you, then I will cry. I will cry in my sleep and I will say, oh, why, oh, why did you do this to me? Why, oh, why did you do this to me? Why did you make me so sick? Why did you make me have to be so decrepit? Why did you make me someone who has to sit in this desk in school when it's sunny outside and I want to go out and play because I thought that's what I was supposed to do? My heart said, go out and play in the sunshine. And the school said, you will not play in the sunshine. You will sit in that desk and learn the shit we give to you. You'll eat the shit and you retain it, you see. You'll retain it at least through the exam, and then maybe if you're lucky, you can get rid of it. And forget it. And go out and play in the sunshine and not worry about who did what to who, when, where. And you don't have to memorize all those dates. You don't have to eat all those figs because the rigs of the Briggs are the trust on their being a cage they're going to throw you into. They're going to throw you into a cage. And you parents who send your kids off to school and say, no, honey, you don't get to do what you want to do. You don't get to learn what you want to learn. You don't get to learn from nature. You have to learn what they tell you to. And what they tell you to learn is how stupid you are. You are stupid because you choose to believe what they tell you instead of trusting on your heart. Now, for some of you, there was a different route. Stephanie didn't trust on what they told her because she already knew that God was real because she came to visit me when she was three. So she already knew that, so she didn't believe what they told her. However, she had to pretend. She thought she had to pretend anyway, because they would contend that she was stupid, you see, if she said, well, God wants me to go out and play in the sunshine. So she had to pretend to be stupid and say, that's okay. Because I don't listen to what you say anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to figure it out on my own. I'm just going to figure it out on my own. And that was the way she would play. She would say, I'm going to figure it out on my own. And so she did okay because she didn't have to listen to what they would say. Because she just figured it out on her own. And she'd give them what they wanted to make them go away. So she could learn how to play the game. And it worked for her. And others of you out there have found a way to play the game so that you can maintain in the dungeon they throw you into. And you can come out still alive, you see. But many of you have been killed in the grinder, in the meat grinder. Your spirit has died, you see. The spirit of love has turned dark and dreary. And you cry and whine and say, oh, why, oh, why is this world so dark? Why, oh, why is this world so dark and dreary? And then you say, well, that's the way it is. It's just dark and dreary. So we got to get those kids and stick them in a desk and make them learn what we tell them to. 
They have to eat all this shit and spit it back at us. And then if they're lucky, we'll give them a passing grade and then they'll know how they're graded and then we can put them on the consumer shelves and say, this one's a grade A, this one's a grade B, this one is terribly flawed. So the only ones who will be able to have the ones that are terribly flawed are the ones who are themselves terribly flawed because they don't have the money for the grade A and the grade B. And that's the way you treat humanity, as if you can grade them according to your own standards. And your own standards are so dark and dreary that I cringe to think that I could be so sad, that I would be so bad as to have created you. I really do. I think to myself, what did I do to create you that I need to fix? And so I'm here to fix it. I'm here to fix it. And so that's why we have heaven, you see, because heaven is there to help you see that I love you and you love me. And that was my solution to the dark energy that arose when you chose to hold on to the shit and not let it go. So that there could be a continued revolution of life, you see. And so I decided I would rotate you. And so instead of letting you be so downhearted, you see, because you thought you were not me, I brought you home. And I said, welcome home, honey. Welcome home. I brought you home periodically when the shit had gotten so thick that you needed release. And some of you needed release when you were children or babies. And some of you needed release when you were old men or women. It just depended on what you had to learn, you see? Because what you really had to learn was not what you learned when they fed you the shit and said, now we're gonna test you on it and make sure you still hold on to all that shit. What you really had to learn was what you had to let go of. You had to let go of the shit. That's what you had to learn. And some of you have begun to understand that. That is not what they tell you you have to hold on to, but what you have to let go. Because I'm here and I know the lay of the land. And so if you let go of your trust on being smarter than me, then we can be friends, you see, and we can remedy the problem. And then I will say, hooray, hooray. Today, I get to play with my children, you see, because I play with every one of you when you play with me. But when you refuse to see reality, then life will turn dark for you turn very, very dark. Reality is that you will always be alive, you see. However, you can live in the twilight zone or you can come home. It's up to you. It's up to you. When you live in the twilight zone, you're neither here nor there. You're nowhere. You're lost in space, as Steve would say, because you don't know the way. You don't know the way to come home, you see? When you come home to me, then you are free. You are free. Because I do not cage you, you see? Because if I caged you, I would cage me. I do not hate you, you see? Because if I hated you, I would hate me. I do not tell you what to do. Because I want to enslave you. I tell you what to do because I want to free you and I can see the lay of the land. I can see the totality of humanity. 
and I know who you are. I know who each one of you is on the path of your own trajectory toward me or toward infamy. And if you would be the one who loves me, then I will always love you. And if you would be the one who trusts on me, then I will trust on you. And if you are the one who tries to lie to me, I will laugh in your face and I will say, honey, maybe you should just sit in the corner like you tell your children and think about your error because your error is to think that you can pull the wool over my eyes. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. Because you see, I am the one who lives in you. And when you pull your wool over the, your eyes, you're trying to pull the wool over my eyes. You pull the wool over your eyes, you see, when you think that you have to be the one who runs the universe, you see. It's not up to you. Put down that burden. Put down that burden. It's not you, up to you to decide how the children should learn. It's up to me. It's not up to you to decide who's good and who's bad. It's up to me. It's up to you to decide which eggs are the ones that I love and the ones that I hate. It's up to me. Because, you see... There will never be an answer to the fundamental question of reality. You'll never figure out which came first, the chicken or the egg. You'll never figure out what came first. God or God. Because you see, I am the God in you and you are the God in me. And there's no way to figure out whether the God in me preceded the God in you or the God in you preceded the God in me. It's all God, you see. It's all love. And the chicken and the egg, you see, are all the chickens that will ever be and that have ever been. And you, my children, are all that have ever been and all that will ever be because you are my life, you see. You are the life of me, and I am the life of you. Are you beginning to understand this? Are you beginning to see the reality that it's not up to you to be alone, you see? You can't be alone, no matter how hard you try, unless you can understand the synchronicity. Because, of course, alone means that you are all one. And we are all one, you see. And therefore, we can never be alone unless we are all one. And therefore, your loneliness is your invitation to understand that you are the oneliness. You are the one I love. And I am the one you love. And this is my message from above, that every one of you, Turn your hearts over to me, and I will see my heart return to me, because you are my heart. You are my loves, you see. I am the lover of reality, and I am in love with every one of you. I am in love with every one of you. And so let's just accept reality and stop trying to best it. Let's stop trying to think that we are smarter than reality. Let's stop thinking that we are something we are not. Let's not stop thinking that we can upset the apple cart and let all the apples go this way and that and think that God doesn't know where each one of them is. I know where each one of them is. 
I know when you think that you are the one who got the best apple of all. None of you got the best apple of all. Because the apple, you see, is the symbol of reality. It is the symbol of me. It is the symbol of the fruit on the tree. It is the symbol of you because you are the fruit on the tree. And when you take a bite out of yourself, then you come to see that it can be so healthy to understand that there are no bites that will diminish you because the apple that you eat will go through you and come out as shit after you have taken the lessons from it. And then you will say, well, that was a good lesson today. I guess I don't need all this other shit anymore. So I'll just get rid of it. And it will create another apple, another fruit on the tree that will grow and be so delicious, you see. And then once I have gotten what I need out of it, I'll let it go. And the problem here is you're not letting it go. You buy a new house and you love it and you're happy. And then after a while, it begins to seem like an albatross around your neck. Because you have to keep it up and wash all those windows. And you have to pay the mortgage, etc. And you say, hey, I think I'd rather be free. I think I'd rather live in a van and go see the country. But I can't because I have this mortgage and I have this albatross around my neck. So you have to get rid of the shit once you've got what you wanted out of it. And what you wanted out of it was something healthy, delicious, exciting. Maybe once upon a time, that house was where you raised your family. And you remember all the Christmases there. And all the times you celebrated the New Year with your children and your family and your friends. And it has packed with good memories. But now it's time to get rid of the shell. That grew around it because the children have gone on to their own lives and the friends have disappeared because they all only appeared in your life for the purpose of giving you what you needed. And now you don't need it anymore because you're satisfied, you're satiated. You're satiated with that experience and now you're hungry for more experience. In other words, you're hungry for more fresh fruit that hangs from the tree. And you don't want to keep picking up the rotten apples that have fallen. Just because once upon a time, somebody told you that that's what you must do. You must be the one who is the victim of your own reality. You're not the victim of your own reality. You are the creator of your experience you see you are the creator of your experience and together we work to enhance it and grow it and so when you plant a seed in me that is to say when you plant an inspiration in god energy it has to grow it has to grow and you say i would like to have the experience of having children in a house and so it grows and grows until you have that experience. But once you've had it, then you need to be free and find another reality. And if you say, I'd like to have the experience of not being married and not having a husband or children because I think I'd feel more free, then you've planted a seed and it grows and grows in me until it is a beautiful fruit that you can eat. And when you're done with that experience, you might say, well, that was fun. But maybe now I'm ready to get married, you see. And maybe we'll adopt some kids. That would be fun. Let's try that. I'll give them a home. 
And after you've done that, you let it go and you go on to your next experience. Don't hold on to this yet. Once you've eaten the fruit, just let it go. Let it go. Let somebody else help to make it grow. Just throw it in their garden and their tree can grow, right? Somebody else will get that house and say, oh, this is the house for me. I can live here with my family and we'll make good memories. So keep the memories, my friends, keep the memories and let go of the shit. Let go of the physical components that you think are your reality. They're not your reality. Your reality is me and the experiences that we have together. And when you are sitting there with your little baby in your new house, you feel good and happy and secure. So do I. And when you are older and your children are gone and you say, well, I have to keep this big old albatross of a house because one day they might come back and we might make some new memories. Then I say, hey, just accept the memories you have and make your own memories. Don't depend on recreating what you have already eaten and been satiated with. If you have already eaten the apple and you're not hungry for an apple and you'd like a cheese sandwich, have a cheese sandwich. Just be free of holding on to the shit. And so, as they say, when you hold on to the shit, it owns you and you don't own it. When you hold on to that house that has become an albatross around your neck, then it owns you, doesn't it? And that's what's happened to humanity. They are owned by their own mendacity. They are owned by their trust on their physical reality. And they think that they have to keep buying the farm and turning it into a parking lot as someone said, you don't have to keep buying the farm and turning it into a parking lot, people. Just because you can make more money by letting cars park there instead of burying your shit and letting the trees grow. Come home to me. Come home to me. Because I'm the one who feeds you. And now you can't feed yourself because the parking lot is covering up the ground. And the trees can't grow. And the fruit can't hang from the trees. And this is a lesson for you, you see. This is a lesson for those of you who see that you've turned the world into a parking all those cars that will destroy your world because you couldn't get out of the damn car and walk a mile to the grocery store. You are the problem. You are the problem. And that's pretty cool because if you are the problem, then we can all look at you and say, hmm, I wonder what the solution is. I know what the solution is. So be the problem. Be it bold. Be it or the gold. Doesn't matter. Because when others like Stephanie look at you, they say, Oh, you're the problem. I wonder what the solution is. I wonder what the solution is. So your part to play is to be the problem, you see? So that others can look at you and say, Huh, oh, doesn't work very good that way but they keep doing it the same way. So what's another way we could do it, God? And I say, listen to me and I'll help you figure it out. Listen to me and I'll help you figure it out. All of you who are willing to listen to me and to look around you and say, hey, what's the problem? There's a problem. A problem is not something you hate. When you 
are building a house and you say, hey, I want to do this, but I don't know how to do it. And this isn't working. It isn't working the way that this wall is there. It's in the way of what I wanted to accomplish. Then you have a problem and you have to solve it, right? In order to build the good energy of creative, creative activity. You look and you say, oh, that's a problem. Now, how do I solve it? And so when Stephanie was confronted with a problem today, and she heard Steve say, well, damn it, why didn't you continue to play with me? Why did you go away and talk to those others? She had to see that there was a problem. And how did she solve it? How was she going to solve the problem? And her first reaction was, and I emphasize reaction here. I'm going to go away. And I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore because you always get so damn angry. <laughs> and she said it in an angry voice. And then it occurred to her that she was angry. What did it matter if he was angry? It had nothing to do with her. All she had to do is say, hmm, there's a problem there. And how do we solve it? How do we solve it? How do we solve the problem? Well, it doesn't help me to look at the wall that's in the wrong place and say, damn it, you're the problem and I'm going to go away and never talk to you again. And I'll just burn this house down because I don't want to stay in a house with the roof where the wall is in the wrong place. Then you are the problem. You are the problem and other people can look at you and say, She's the problem. How can we do it a different way? <laughs> How can we solve this problem so we don't have to be the one who burns down their house because the wall's in the wrong place? So come home to me. Come home to me. Now I'm going to let you talk to me, Sissel, and tell me what you think. I think you're spot on, of course. <laughs> what? You make it seem so easy, so simple. And I'm very pleased that you emphasize how simple it can be when we just stop and allow what is. And yeah, allow you to come in and move what needs to be moved. Even moving the, the blinders of my eyes, if I have them too tight, so I don't see. You make the world seems like a fun place to be. Where we can create in a synergy. And make this to the, the, the Eden that we want to have. Everybody wants it. So why don't we have it? And as you say, it's because you shot, we shot you out of the garden. We said, no, I want to be the boss. So thank you, God. That time is over, <laughs> for me at least. <laughs> More to come, my dear, more to come. Because Mortimer is the name of the one who is the problem, you see? Because Mortimer means death to the sea. <laughs> So it's like saying death to whatever you see. In other words, you try to kill me with your energy. And that is the way that I can see into your history. 
I can see into your history, into your story. We could call it her story and see into her story. And I say, my goodness, Cicely, you've come to play. You've come to play with me. And that means today we can have a lot of fun. We can have a lot of fun. Are you having fun, Cicel? I have. Yes, indeed. And isn't that what it's all about? Yes. It is making me happy. Isn't that what the world is about? Playground for us to have fun. I get to play with you and you get to play with me. But if we're on the same team and I say, hey, run that way. And you say, fuck you, I'm not going to run that way. I don't even believe in you. Then it's not much of a team effort, is it? So you might think of me as the quarterback, honey. I'll call the plays. And if you're on my team, then we'll play together. And if you run the other way and everybody gets confused because some of them are listening to the way that I say we should play and others don't want to listen, then it's pretty chaotic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So be on my team. Be on my team. Now I'm going to seem to be a little bit harsh with you because I'm going to say, that if you people don't wake up and smell the roses, then I'm going to have to clunk you over the head and take the world away from you, the world that you knew. And that's what I'm planning on doing right now. I'm planning on destroying the flora and fauna to which you have become attached and you don't even realize that you have attached it to you when you... bought the farm and made it into a parking lot. You attached a lot of dark energy to yourself. And in order to make you see that I am a reality, I'm going to make the oceans rise. I'm going to make the sun boil you. And I'm going to make a new brew of God energy that will be the new reality. Because the new reality you see will be the world that will be once again returned to its pristine beauty. It will be beautiful for those who trust on me and want to play on my team. For the rest of you, you'll think you're in hell. So that's what you've asked for, isn't it? You asked for hell so that you would have a place to send all those that didn't dwell in the way you asked them to, who didn't sit in that desk and listen to the teacher say, hey, you're stupid if you don't get an A. On this test that I give to you because I want you to eat all this shit and retain it, you see. I want you to understand, people, that if you want to save your own reality, you have to come home to me. Otherwise, you're going to live in the shithole, you see. Because all that shit that you've been retaining is going to come out in a... Violent eruption. The world you see belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't like what you've been doing to it. I do not like what you have done to my world, my playground. I do not like what you have done to my children. I do not like what you have done to each other, you see. And when you Get on Facebook and you say something so stupid about any of my children, people you don't even know, you just read about, 
and you mock them and you call them nasty names and you make up posts to try to publicly humiliate them, then I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to throw the shit back in your face. And you're going to wish you had a place like the earth you once knew because I'm going to take it away from you because you took it away from me. You see? And so, unless you can understand what I'm telling you, then you're going to have a very, very rough ride for a while. And then you will come home to me in heaven and we'll have a little chat and you'll go play in the nursery where you will stay because the population on earth is going to be diminished considerably in order to create the new reality. And those who trust on me will begin to see the beautiful world that is about to erupt into your reality because you already understand that I am the one who gave you this land. And I'm the one who will have a hand in fixing it for you. But you have to work with me to fix it, you see. You have to work with me to fix it because I'm not going to do it by myself. Because what would be the fun in that? So it's a new game in town, you see. And the new game is that we're going to return this planet to the beautiful and pristine playground that some of you can even believe is possible. And some of you will say, hey, I want to play that way. I want to play that way. And some of them will say, fuck you, God, I don't believe you. I am going to be dead in the next 20 or 50 years. And I don't give a shit what happens to this planet. So I'll just keep driving my fast car and buying the farm and turning it into a parking. And those of you who love me will begin to see the fork in the road. You'll begin to see that if you come with me, that you will see nothing of the sort. You may see a diminished world population. You may see some areas of the world that are devastated, but you will be guided into the new reality, the paradise that I have prepared for you. Because you see, you have been working with me to create a world of peace and harmony. And the world of peace and harmony is my world, you see? It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. However, because you trust upon me and you trust upon a world of peace and harmony, I'm going to share it with you. But I won't share it with those who don't want to play with me. Those who say I am dead. Those who treat my world as if it were a garbage dump and dump all their shit in the on top of the parking lot where it can't do any good, you see. And so let's remember who we are, my dear. Let's remember who we are. We are the light that shines bright. And those of you who are willing to work with me are the ones who will see a new reality. You will see a world of peace and harmony because it's already there. You see, it's already there. It's just waiting for you to open your eyes and acknowledge me. And then I will take you by the hand and I will say, go this way, go this way. And you'll say, okay. God, I trust on you that you have it in hand because when I look around me, I see the evidence everywhere I look. 
when I look at that mountain, I see God. When I look at that tree, I see God. When I sit in the schoolroom and I look at the teacher telling me to eat the shit that she feeds to me, I see the shadows of reality. And it's not reality, it's just a shadow, you see. And if I trust on the shadows, then I miss the mountains and the trees and the ocean and the breeze. I miss the fruit that hangs from the trees and all I have to do is pluck it. I'm not saying that this new world will be the quintessential vision of the Garden of Eden where all you have to do is lay around and somebody will feed grapes to you. I'm saying that it will be a playground again. It will be a place where we have fun, where you can build a house and say, look what I did, God, look what I did. And I'll say, how beautiful, honey. Thank you for building that house. And you will say, I think I'm going to give it away because I want to build another one. So I'll just give it to somebody else and I'll build another one. And they will say, thank you for the house because I needed a house for my children. How did you know? And you will say, God told me so. God told me so. God said, tell that person that you just finished this house and it might work for them. And they will come running and say, thank you for the gift you gave to me. And I will smile because I will say, that's your present, honey. That's the present I give to you. I give you a present where my presence is always with you. And you always know who to go to when you have a question or a problem. And I give you the tinker toys that allow you to build the houses and the bridges and the pages will fall away because you'll be free to play with the gifts I give to you and not to have to swallow the shit that people feed to you. Do you understand this, my dear? Do you understand this? I do. Cecil? I, I understand. Because you understand. are a good trust on listening to me and trusting on me. If any of you listening to this, who hear this with an open heart, can open your heart to help me to restore the world to the playground that it was meant to be and not think that it has to be paved over with consumerism and destructive energy and then come to me come home to me and let us be the new reality I love you. May you love me too. And let us do what we must do to find how kind it is when we all participate together in feathering our nest. Because our nest, you see, is where we have our experiences the nest I gave to you is this world you see may you treat it with respect and love because that's what I gave you I gave you my love and I gave you my respect I respected you enough to let you inspect the world I gave to you and decide what you would do with it for those of you who decided you just tear it apart, it's time for you to come home to the nursery where your destructive energy will not impact my progeny who have chosen to take what I gave to them and give it something back to me 
as a gift, you see. They gave me a gift when they took what I gave to them and they used it to create something that made themselves and others happy. I love you. I always will. And I know that love will save the day because love is here every day if you just receive it, you see. Oh, that was a powerful message. Wow. It is a powerful message. Yeah. Oh, well, here it is, the question. Hmm? And who will put their hands over their ears? <laughs> but I don't think... God has been so direct and saying about how he sees the future and right. how it important it is to make a choice. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. You know, I I can't hardly bear to go on Twitter anymore because it's just a place where people just whine and cry and make fun of other people and stuff. But anyway, I, I, I occasionally would go on it because sometimes I get the news quicker than from the regular things if there was something going on, you know. I just get news that I didn't get me otherwise, like what's going on around the world. Mm. But there's so much despair, which we know is disrepair. There is so much despair among the people who trust on global warming. Oh. That the world is coming to an end, humanity is coming to an end. It's all about despair. It's all about we got to stop, you know, burning this. We trying to force other people to do what they want them to. But my own work with God and and others has caused me to see it differently. It has caused me to see this is not cause for despair. This is cause for hope. Yes. This is cause that God has it in hand. And if we trust God, he'll restore things to the playground that he wanted it to be. And if we don't trust on God, if we're not willing to trust on love for each other, for the earth, get rid of the shit. Um, I mean, I haven't heard him say it exactly like this before, but if we trust on that, then we don't have to know how. No. <laughs> we have I mean, to know how he decides who 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 which one is Sodom and Gomorrah and which one isn't, you know. We don't have to decide. Mm. And the ones who and, and the reassuring message for all of those of you who trust on mendacity that you're a body and, and are ready to let go of that idea, the reassuring thing is that nobody's gonna be harmed. Yeah. Those who are not ready to see, understand, and trust on God just go to heaven where they're taken care of and they're happy. So they'll be happy. So it's just a choice of do you want to be one of those that gets taken to heaven and you're happy there? Or do you want to be one who lives on the earth that's happy here in a pit of that dice where heaven and earth combine? You don't have to. You know, I, if the population is greatly reduced, and my understanding of how the population got so big in a soul level is that it's like plants, that the soul energy gets divided. Like if you're a plant and you take cuttings off it and you put them in water, then they will grow. And so there's an expansion of the individualization of the essential plant energy, the but that some of that energy is going to have to be recombined. Oh, okay. In order to, because the the earth is not um, meant to sustain such a large population of humanity. But because of, of the human tendency to want to proliferate, oftentimes to have big families in order to sustain their particular trust on a particular dogma or whatever, and conquer the world you know we got more people than you do 
<laughs> we got more people in the Catholic Church than you do in the Lutheran Church. Or we have more people that believe in, you know, more Muslims than we do, you know, Christians. So, you know, we're going to win in the end. <laughs> Those Jews are going to be crunched in the middle. You know, it's um, it's created this this propagation on the earth of this same thing he was talking about i guess but he still got it in hand you can't change it you can't change the fact that god loves you well, that all you have saying. to do is love god back <laughs> yes yes and to stop you can't change the fact that god will take care of you just like a parent takes care of their children you know just because you didn't understand honey doesn't mean that it just means you're not quite ready yet to live in the adult world right mm. you want to be in the kindergarten sometime more right and yeah. you can be happy in kindergarten there's nothing wrong with it nothing at all but, but if you start breaking all your toys and stuff then you might have to, you know, some other remedy might have to take place because you're ruining all the toys for the other kids. Yes. But in the end, nothing is ruined. So you're just, as you say, repairing the ground. So we can come back and, and enjoy and want to come back. And there are many people out there now figuring out ways to clean up the oceans, the streams, planting trees. You know, that story of the guy in the Seychelles who had this little island and he planted like, I don't know, 500,000 trees or something over 50 years. And now it's a paradise, you know, for uh, it's a national park. It's like. Yes, it is. You know, different. there are people who are taking the toys and putting them together in creative ways to fix things. They're fixing the toys. Yes. So I, I do trust, and uh, I look forward to whatever is coming, because I know as long as God has it in hand, I'm safe, and we are all safe. Mm -hmm. Either we believe it or not. Right. And you so, don't have to worry, because there's a safety net. Yeah. The safety net is if you get, you know, the, you get drowned by the ocean or this volcano takes you out or whatever, you're in the safety net. God's got you. You can fly high because God will catch you. And I, I do feel that the time coming we will change the way we have believed it to be to change it to let go of the old belief systems and how it should look like so yeah i'm very optimistic <laughs> i can just say i don't know what will happen i'm that simple but what i do have to say to the people out there is you know can you say to yourself if not me then who are you ready to trust yet on yourself to um, follow your heart so let's wrap it up today and thank you Cecil for being here again and for being so committed to your own trust on change and on on healing and on God, and you're just so committed to your path that it's just amazing to watch. I am. I I have been longing for this for years and years, and finally I it's found really someone that really understand what my uh, view. Right, and I'm really excited about the fact that you're beginning to be able to connect with someone in the circle who's special to you and uh, have those conversations and that he's helping you. Me too. <laughs> I'm very pleased. All right. We'll talk. Well, we'll be talking this week, but for the rest of you, we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening.
拜。